What's going on guys? So today we're looking at one of my knife display cases. I've had this case for probably 15 years. It's just a glass display case. Uh, but the knives that are in there have been literally sitting like that for about eight years. All right, probably longer. Uh, there's a couple in there that I want to start using again. So we're going to take this display case off the wall, take the knives out, and talk about it a little bit. So first off, the three that are open are the ones I was planning on using. Uh, however, I noticed there's a little bit of damage on this Colt knife. And if I zoom in, you can see that the plastic right around the pin had cracked, which is really unfortunate. Um, this is probably just due to the um, you know, heat and cold, the back and forth over the years. And you can also say it's cracked on the other side as well. But luckily that's the only damage uh, you know, between all these knives that were here. So this, let's start here. This is a six bladed Stockman. All right, there are literally six different blades here. Let me move this out of the way so you can kind of see, you know, through the background there. All right, so we have a large drop point blade, small drop point blade, large clip point blade, small clip point blade, a worn cliff on the back, and a, a small worn cliff, I should say, and a small spay blade. And these are all titanium nitride coated. Might be hard to tell, but they're all black. All right, it says titanium on this uh, drop point here. All right, you can see the Colt logo, crimped bolsters, you know, black synthetic, and obviously the Colt shield. Very, very interesting knife. Uh, I love this back in the day when I got into traditionals, and I mean back in the day. This must have been 10 plus years ago. I was really fascinated with how many blades you can get into one knife, all right? There's no other tools here. There's literally six different blades, different sizes, different shapes, you know, traditionally for different purposes. Um, but I just thought that was really, really cool. So for the first time in like eight years, I'm gonna close this knife up. This has been on display all that time. All right, you can see it's a little bit thicker, but it's not anything ridiculous. You can certainly carry this in the pocket, um, you know, and obviously retrieve each individual blade as you need them. All right, very cool though. So <clears throat> specifically because this cracked a little bit here, I'm going to carry and use this one. So moving on, this one, is the same thing. It is a six-bladed Stockman. This is part of Rough Riders buoy series. So you can see there's a giant buoy shield, all right, which uh, has a, a textured scale here, which I thought was awesome, which was really, really cool to me. Again, you know, six blades. This actually has the same exact setup. It's got a uh, large drop point, small drop point, large clip point, small clip point, uh, Warncliffe, and spay blade, the small Warncliffe and small spay. All right, you can see the reverse side, same thing, kind of a saw cut, you know, pattern in here. But again, for the first time in like eight years, you can see how this is uh, pretty snappy. I'm glad they still, you know, have their strength. Uh, this is also one that I'm probably going to start using, just carrying. So lately, I've just really been on the traditional kick, uh, breaking out a lot of my different traditional knives. And that's what made me want to do this video is I was looking at my display and I was thinking, man, those knives have been sitting there for years. I'd like to start using a couple of those. So these six blade Sockmans, they're definitely more rare. Um, they're not expensive brands by any means. Colt is pretty cheap. I think originally I paid like $30 for this knife. The Rough Rider, I want to say about the same, maybe 25, 30 ish. Um, you know, they're harder to find today, but you can still find them, you know, if you look hard enough. But they definitely went up in value, uh, but I don't really care about the value. I'm going to be using them. So next I have two Case Hobo knives. All right, these are uh, pretty cool. If you haven't seen these before, basically you have a, a knife and a fork. All right, but when they are both extended out, you can take them apart. All right, so you can use them independently, you know, for eating food. Obviously cutting, and uh, there's also a bottle opener in here, and a little fork. All right, so great for, you know, around the camp. Uh, stuff like that. Obviously, you can use it at home if you want. Just kind of a fun novelty, but they certainly do work very well. Um, I don't have a specific use for these. Uh, mostly, by the way, when this fork is closed, it locks the scales back up, okay? So they do not move. So when you're using the knife, it's not going to, like, you know, get loose or anything on you. Um, I have so many different camp utensils and, you know, camp forks and knife sets and everything else that I know I'm not going to use this. I actually already have a Hobo. I don't think it's a case brand. I have a different one. Um, so I might actually end up selling these or trading them or something. This one's a little bit more special because this one has a fully serrated blade, which you really don't see much on case knives. Okay, you can see it's kind of a scallop serration pattern, uh, but same deal. Right, fork and knife, and they come apart for use. It's very cool. 
So, ooh, ding. <laughs> I like that little that snap noise. Let's do it again. All right. So, um, yeah, those are the hobo knives. Now, there are hobo knives that come with a spoon as well, a third tool. I used to have those, but those were traded off many years ago. Um, next, I have these two knives. This one's a little more special because this is a five-bladed sow belly. This is a traditional three-bladed sow belly. All right, sow belly, the name comes from the shape, obviously, of the knife, like most traditional patterns, uh, kind of like that one, which we'll talk about in a second there. Um, but yeah, this is supposed to mimic a pig's belly. Okay, so we obviously have that curvature there. A sow is a mother pig, if I'm not mistaken. And this is a very robust, kind of a heavier duty um, slip joint pattern, uh, mostly used by farmers. Now this one has the traditional setup here, all right, with the large clip point blade. There's a uh, slightly smaller um, sheep's foot blade, and then of course the spade blade. Um, the other one that I have here is a five bladed sow belly. Again, a little bit more unique, a little bit more rare. Um, same three blades, but you have the additional small clip point and you have the additional small drop point. All right, just really, really cool setup. Those are the sow bellies. Pretty collectible as well. I actually have, I think, two or three more traditional, like, um, three-bladed sow bellies with different scales. Um, you can see this one is numbered. All right, so it's part of, like, collector's club thing, serialized. Uh, I do like using these knives. It's hard because, you know, case knives are collectible in general, and the ones that are special, limited edition and stuff, limited release, you don't want to use them because you want to retain the value, but, you know, at the end of the day, they're nice tools, so I do like to actually use my knives. Um, in some cases, if they're super rare, I won't use it. Um, because I have a couple of the other three bladed, I'll probably save that one, you know, use it in the future as a trade item or something, uh, but this five bladed one I will probably end up using. So that leaves us with these three. Um, this one is Case Trapper, an older model. All right, this one's also serialized here. Um, just simple trapper, but because it's older, I'll probably not use this. This will go into my trapper collection. Even though I like a ton of different uh, slip joint patterns, I have the most trappers than anything else. So I do kind of focus on trappers as far as collectibles. Um, then we have a case Coke bottle, and I was talking about this uh, earlier. The sow belly looks like a mother pig's belly. It just kind of dips down, big old fat belly hanging. This one obviously looks like a Coke bottle. There we go, a little easier to see with those blades out. All right, but this uh, kind of dips in a little bit, and then there's two shoulders here, okay, wide points, and then it kind of narrows down a little bit towards that flat top, just like a Coke bottle. All right, simple two blades, large clip point, and small drop point. All right, this is also an older case knife. So I probably won't carry this one, even though it's pretty cool. Um, who knows, I don't know. Th this size knife actually fits really, really well in those pocket organizers. And I'm kind of liking the idea of having like an old school knife, you know, in the organizer. Originally, I liked the idea of having, you know, the pen, a lighter, and a flashlight. But sometimes I'll carry a flashlight separate anyway. And I always have a flashlight on my keys. So not really necessary to have a flashlight in the pocket organizer. So I'm kind of leaning back towards just pen, flat, or excuse me, pen, uh, lighter, and traditional knife. So because of the size, because it's a little bit more unique, who knows, that might end up in one of those. And lastly, I have a uh, just a little Buck Stockman. This one was a Chuck Buck signature. All right, so a little three-bladed Stockman. But on the uh, main blade here, there was his signature. And I don't know if this was machined, signed in there, probably, like machine engraved. All right, or if he used a Dremel and signed a bunch of them. Don't really know. You can see that was from, I believe, 2002. Anyway, I just wanted to share these knives with you guys, just in case you haven't seen these patterns before. It might be something you're interested in. Um, and I like making these videos too, because I know a ton of guys that like modern knives, but when they see videos like this, they go, hmm, I don't know, maybe I should be looking into some of these traditional knives. And of course, there's a mix of both. There's a lot of modern traditionals using modern technology, modern materials, but they still have that old school feel. Um, it's just really cool. There's so much history in these types of knives. I mean, you just, they're hard to ignore. But of course, when it comes to knives, ever since I was nine years old, I've loved everything with a cutting edge. If it can cut stuff, I like it. If it's a knife, I'm into it. But I constantly go back and forth between different types of knives where I'll have little phases. Maybe I'm into fixed blades this month. Maybe next month I want to focus on balisongs. In this case, I'm kind of just revisiting traditional knives just because I love them so much. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know down in the comment section, do you EDC a traditional knife? If you do, what do you EDC? Thanks for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.